I'm Rachel Mixon, minister at Zion Spring Baptist Church. As we navigate these difficult times of social distancing, it's by God's grace that we continue to stay connected and gather together. Please feel free to visit our website at www.zionsbconline.com and join us in Bible study on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m., Sunday school at 8.45 a.m., and then stay with us in worship at 10 a.m. on social media via YouTube, Facebook, or Zoom. You can leave your prayer requests, continue to give tithes and offerings, or if you feel led to donate, you can do so at our website, www.zionsbconline.com. Thank you, stay safe, and God bless. Psalm 138 says, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. 
Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. We're here today by the grace and according to God's love and mercy. We're here today because God has a plan and a purpose that he is yet working out in our lives. It's good to know that we serve a God who, no matter what's going on or no matter what we've done or how we've fallen short, he does not abandon his purposes in our lives. And today we are the living, breathing proof that God is not through with us. He will perfect what concerns us. His mercy endures forever. And he will not abandon the work of his hands. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for the grace and privilege of being uh, before you one more time. Thank you, God, for all that you've done for us, all of who you are, how you continue to show yourself strong and faithful in our lives. Even as we face uncertain times and there's turmoil all around, God, you have proven to be faithful. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And in your faithfulness, God, you have been gracious and merciful to us. And that mercy is brand new every morning. And for that, God, we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord, because you could have been done with us when we laid down, but you watched over us. You kept us and you raised us up one more time, clothed us in a right mind, and, and allowed our time to roll on so that we might find ourselves again in your will. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Now, God, bless us as we've gathered in your name. Bless the songs that will be sung, the prayers that will be lifted, the offerings that will be rendered. Lord, may it all be for your, for your goodness and your glory according to your grace toward us. God, I pray for those who are sitting in their home listening. I pray, God, that you'll infuse the message, infuse these songs with, with uh, power and the grace of your presence so that it stirs us all on the inside to draw closer to you while we still have a chance. Lord, today we need to hear from you. And, and, and right now, God, our hearts and our ears stand open Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us in ways that we can understand. Speak to us in ways that uh, uh, make sense to us, in ways that, that are portable and practical, so that when we leave out of this service, we can leave out better than how we started. Lord, I pray that you'll bless all those who are gathered here this morning. Um, work on us, work in us, until our lives reflect your glory. It's in Jesus' name and for his sake we ask it all. Amen.
morning. We're blessed this morning, especially blessed, because we have with us this morning one of our own. We have Minister Rachel Mixon coming to us to share with us the word of the Lord. Uh, I have to tell you that I'm beyond privileged because my daughter, who is now my daughter twice, uh, has uh, answered the call of the Lord into this gospel ministry. And we've been privileged to get to sit and listen to her and watch her grow. And I know some of you who are watching have been along for the ride with us. But I pray God, th that you will pray uh, especially with us as she uh, gets ready to come. I pray that God will bless her heart and mind free of any distractions so that she can declare to us what thus saith the Lord. Uh, please, would you join me in praying with her as she comes? Uh, Minister Rachel Mixon. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Let's pray before we begin. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to gather together um, virtually and to hear a word from you, Lord. We pray, I pray that the message would be clear and that your people would be able to hear your voice clearly, Lord. We pray that the message is received with hearts that are open and ready to trust you more and more every day, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Finding and keeping balance. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. As I was preparing this message this week, I struggled with God's command, his desires for us to be balanced, but maybe that's because I don't practice balance in my own life. I overcommit and stress about getting tasks done that aren't meant for me with time I don't have. So because I was wrestling so hard with this, I did something I don't normally do. I asked for help. And my friends began to ask me, what does a balanced life look like to you? What does balance consist of? And needless to say, I couldn't come up with an adequate response because my idea of balance involves plans. It involves analyzing how I'm going to get everything done. But the more I talked, the more I realized that I don't know and have never known myself to be balanced. Ouch. <laughs> The scripture tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. But what does it mean to trust God wholeheartedly? What does that look like and how do we do it practically? In the art world, balance is about compositional harmony. It's about proportions, preparation, sketches, foundations, and artistic imagination. When I am beginning a new painting, before I ever put brush to canvas, I need to have a subject to focus on. I must decide on colors and prepare a color palette, prepare the water, and orient myself in the space of the image. I must have confidence in the composition and be well acquainted with the makeup of the picture because fear and anxiety have a way of showing themselves in the shadows of a painting. In order to maintain good balance and rhythm in the painting, the artist must move in confidence. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. As we learned in Bible study, the word trust in Proverbs chapter 3 is translated from a Hebrew word that also means confidence or boldness. It's the same word that's used in Psalm chapter 56 where David says, In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Uh -huh. Trusting God is rooted in confidence. Uh -huh. Confidence not in self, but in the one who is the core. Mm -hmm. 
God is at the core. He is the center, the foundation of all things. But when God is not our core, or when our connection to the Lord is weak, we are hesitant to trust him. If you have trust issues, then it's because God is not truly the center of your being. Trust looks like turning to him, leaning into his presence, and continued communication with him. Cling to him, fellowship in his presence, and enjoying his protection. But it is impossible to be confident in someone you are not connected to. So how do we trust God? We stay connected. And how do we stay connected? We worship. Worship is an established and a consistent connection to the Father. Worship is an acknowledgement of God's worth, an appreciation for his presence and comfort in his plans. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's an imperative statement, a command. Therefore, worship is a command, a requirement for the children of God. Hesitancy to lean on him implies a lack of trust in his ability to hold you up. When we doubt God, we begin to do things that don't make any sense. We stay up too late worrying about things that we cannot control. We stress over minute details and we fail to show grace and mercy to others. We begin to lean on our own abilities and resources and we tire quickly as a result. The funny thing about depending on yourself is that it is impossible to lean on yourself. Physically, it is impossible to lean on yourself. Think about that. How do you lean on yourself? You physically can't do it. Our bodies were only created to hold themselves up when we are firmly planted on a solid foundation. Leaning on yourself when you are not whole is literally impossible. You wouldn't ask someone who has an amputated leg to stand unless they had something there to hold them up. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. When you lean on God, he can rest in you. Leaning on something that is weaker than you or as weak as you is foolish. That means leaning on other people, leaning on other situations, setting expectations not rooted in the promises of God. It just doesn't work. Be confident in God. You can trust him. (laughs) He is incapable of failing. Proverbs commands that we trust the Lord and lean on God, but it also implores us to acknowledge him. Acknowledgement has to do with giving God your attention. You can be turned toward God, but if he doesn't have your attention, you will stray. In all your ways, acknowledge him. That means seeing God's hand in every situation. Acknowledgement is devotion to our relationship with him. Hebrews chapter 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. That means you must be focused on God. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. This next part says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Fix your eyes on him. Stay focused. The truth is, that we will never achieve true balance apart from God. But the good news is that we can depend on him to keep his promises. If you praise him, he will provide for you, protect you, preserve you, and he will prosper you. God is the only one who gives us strength when we depend on him. Most of the time, dependence on another person weakens the one who is doing the leaning. If you have to lean on something, you no longer have your full amount of strength. Depending on people and things requires that we give all of our strength over to those people and things. But God is a stronghold who strengthens and empowers us as we lean into him. But when you depend on God, when you give him your strength, he fills you up and empowers you to continue on. He directs the path that is before you. 
He directs the path that is before you. He gives you the ground to walk on. He gives you the ground to walk on. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he strengthens you to move ahead. Yeah. Yeah. One step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Balance is a byproduct of spiritual maturity. Hebrews chapter 6 says, Therefore, Mm -hmm. let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Trust him. Worship him. Mm -hmm. Cling to him. Acknowledge him yeah. and fellowship in his presence. Yeah. If yeah. you attach yourself to him and allow him to lead you, he'll take you right. one day at a time, one step at a time, one moment at a time. Mm-hmm. Finding and keeping balance mm-hmm. is only possible mm-hmm. when your foundation is sure and strong. Mm-hmm. You have to trust God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart Uh and do not lean on your own understanding. Uh In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. This is God's word for his people. Amen. Thank God for his word and his spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Have confidence in him. He will give you the ground to walk on. And he will give you the strength to move on one step at a time, one moment at a time, one day at a time. What a word from the Lord. Trust in the Lord. If you're struggling today, to trust him. If you're struggling and you're overwhelmed by life and circumstance and you've gotten a bit tired I want to remind you of the words that you've heard today trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path I want you to remember those words but I also want you to remember the witness of Jesus He is the epitome of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And when times got tough, he leaned in all the more to the will of the Father. While he was betrayed and beaten, stripped and whipped, and led through the dusty streets of Jerusalem, his eyes were steadfastly upon the Father. When he accepted the nails in his hands and in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head, his eyes were fixed on doing the Father's will. Even as he hung there on Calvary's cross, dying and yielding up the ghost, his eyes were heavenward. Into your hands, he said, I commend my spirit. He was trusting in the will of the Father when he was buried in that tomb laid there on Friday and Saturday and all Saturday night 
because his eyes were steadfastly upon the Father. Scripture says early on that Sunday morning. Yeah, thank you, God. Early on that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. He overcame fear, death, hell, and the grave because his eyes were fixed on the Father. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path just like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Brother, sister, you can get up. You can go on. Thank you, God. you can endure the uncertainty of our times if you'll trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. He will give you the ground that you stand on. Mm -hmm. He'll give you the strength to endure taking one step at a time. Mm -hmm. One day at a time. Sometime one moment at a time. You can have confidence in that. Thank you. Minister Rachel, for pouring your heart out and encouraging us today Thank you, God. with that steady reminder that we can have confidence in God. If you want to know more about this God that we serve, if you want to know more about Jesus, reach out and let us know. Visit our website and send us a message. We would love to walk with you on this journey, encourage you along the way, and to help you become all that God has created you to be. Amen. It's always a privilege to be able to um, stand and preach, to sit and preach, to preach in general. Um, I'm grateful for a connection with God and I hope that you heard him today let's pray now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us blameless before the Lord our God we pray that you would keep us safe as we are apart from one another Lord sustain our health help us to trust you to love one another well until we meet again, in Jesus' name, amen. If you have questions about salvation or just want more information about the Zion Spring Baptist Church, please visit our website at www.zionsbconline.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to answer your questions, and we'd love to share this journey with you. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with Zion Spring Baptist Church, where you are welcome.